Hey guys, John Houck here. I want to show you a little bit about the Lepavoni CAD model and give you a chance to see how this uh, pretty cool espresso machine works. Uh, to check it out, here are some links on the screen. And I'm going to just jump right into the CAD model. And that's uh, bit.ly slash Lepavoni CAD. If you don't like typing that in, you can type in this big long URL here at the top and that'll get you the same place. We're now in a website called Onshape, and you can see that up here on the left side. And Onshape is basically a 3D CAD modeling web browser uh, program. And you'll notice right now I'm logged into Onshape, uh, or actually I'm not logged into Onshape. And so this is publicly viewable, uh, so you should be able to do this right now without even creating an account. Um, you see a group head here, and uh, what I'm going to do is show you the entire product. So in order to do this on your own computer, if you want, you'll notice down here there's a bunch of tabs, and I'm using some arrow keys on the very lower right corner of the screen to go back and forth. And the way I've got this set up right now is the leftmost tab is called Product. So I'll click on that, and that's going to load in the entire La Pavone lever machine that we're looking at here. This one happens to be the uh, Europicola uh, Generation 2 group head and uh, black base. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the difference real quickly here between the Europicola, which has a boiler here. And the diameter of the boiler is 80 millimeters. You can see that down here in the lower right corner of the screen. I'm going to change the Europicola to Professional and give it just a second to redraw here. And uh, you'll see that the boiler size here changes, and it changes to 100 millimeters. So that's essentially at least my understanding of the difference between the Professional and the Europicola. Uh, the group head is really what I'm interested in showing you today, and right now I'm showing you the Generation 2 group head. Uh, I've modeled the Generation 2, the Generation 3, and the Generation 4, so let's pop between those here real quick. Generation 2 is what you're seeing, and if I measure this circle right here, it shows me it's 50 millimeters uh, across our diameter of the circle at the top of the bell. And if I then go to generation three, you'll see that get fatter. And see how that got fatter right here? And that is actually 60 millimeters. And then generation four uh, is the modern uh, Stradivaria type looking uh, group head. Um, internally, my understanding is the generation four and generation three are identical on the inside. It's just the shape of the outside. Uh, this one is uh, more or less pleasing. Um, I guess, depending on who you are. Uh, next thing I want to do is allow you to see how to use these buttons if you happen to come to this website on your own. Um, remember, uh, go to the product tab on the lower left, um, and then you can go to this home button screen, and that'll always take you back here. So let's go back to the Europicola, and let's go Generation 2 group head. And uh, clicking the home button uh, centers our, our uh, reorients us to the product. And this, if you click this and then you use your mouse, you can kind of spin the model around and you can look at it from the bottom, uh, look at it from the top, etc. Um, another way to spin around is this cube over here. So um, let me first click home again and I'll turn off this spinny thing. And then I can come over here to this cube and click top and it shows me the top of the product. Um, and then I can use this arrow here um, and these arrows on the left. So I can turn it this way and then I can click on right and it rotates the product uh, uh, to the right side. And you can kind of spin it around however you want. Um, or you can uh, go back here to the spin button and just kind of spin this thing around. Another thing you can do if you uh, want to spin it around is um, to use the right mouse button if you happen to have one. Um, and uh, that's a good way to spin around without having to turn this on. Uh, this is the pan button, allows you to move the product, uh, the uh, CAD model left and right, up and down. Um, you can also do that by using, clicking and holding the center mouse or the mouse wheel button down and moving around. That'll do that as well. Um, and then I spin the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Uh, you can try to struggle with how this all works. I've never really figured that out. I ignore that. I just spin my mouse wheel and that allows me to zoom in and out. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the product from the right, and we're going to look at a section view of the group head here. Um, just to orient you, this is the lever uh, that you would uh, uh, raise up. And, yep, it's pretty cool, isn't it? The CAD model animates. Um, I'm grabbing the lever and moving it up and down. 
Uh, the uh, frothing wand also uh, wobbles back and forth a little bit. I uh, um, uh, and I don't have a steam tip on there yet, so um, we'll uh, we'll do that some other day. Uh, this is the handle to the porta filter, um, and you can kind of take a peek around there and take a look at that. We'll go back to the right side. This right here is the porta filter, and then this is our group head. So I'm going to do a section view. So you can click this right here. And then it says sec select a plane, planar face, cylinder, or make connector. Um, so I'll just click the, the bell portion of the group head. And that should give us a nice cutaway. And uh, before you get confused, click OK up here on this thing that says section view. And that'll turn the section view and allow you to, to take a look at the product. Uh, if you ever want to turn section view off, click this button and you're back to normal. So let's turn it back on. And here we are again. You'll notice in this CAD model, uh, you'll probably be a little disappointed that I don't have the heating element or any of the electronics down here. I just haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, but we're really interested in the group head. And uh, so you can take a look at uh, group head uh, generation two. And uh, let's take a look at uh, how I think this works. Um, I could be wrong, um, but uh, um, uh, this is this is my best guess, and I'm sure you guys uh, can uh, feel free to correct me uh, where I go wrong. So I am not a La Pavone expert. Uh, let's see here. So uh, the boiler uh, filled with water, presumably above the height of this copper siphon tube, and you can see how the tube kind of goes in. And uh, when you raise the lever all the way up, water is supposed to run into this chamber, uh, which is uh, uh, some between the bottom of the brass piston, and this is your shower screen right here, this, the top layer here. And so water rushes in there, and the way water rushes in is there's pressure in the boiler, and it uh, forces the water then up through two holes. You can only see one because the other one is removed from the section view. And that water then splashes uh, through here, through this little crack, and then fills up this area here. So that would be your pre-infusion, filling the group head, or if you don't have any coffee grinds in there, you'll just have water coming out through the shower screen. Uh, yeah, so um, once that is filled and your pre-infusion is done, uh, you will slowly push this pressure uh, lever down, uh, generating uh, pressure in, in, in extracting your coffee. Uh, you'll notice as you lower it, this hole here, let me kind of raise it up again here, as you lower it, this seal, this gasket, will close off the water so no more water will enter the group head. And as you continue to go down, that seal will then direct any water up into here. Uh, however, if you notice, there's a steam vent hole right there. And what will happen, at least my understanding is, then the pressure is going to equilibrate, uh, which means that um, uh, no more water will be forced into the upper chamber. Uh, in fact, the water in inside this copper pipe will probably just go back down and, and meet the level of the water that's in the boiler. So uh, you'll have steam uh, inside the pipe, steam up here in the boiler, steam at the top of the group head, and you'll be extracting coffee uh, through the shower screen, through your coffee grounds, uh, through the uh, portafilter basket, and into a waiting cup. And that is basically my understanding of how a group or a generation two group head works. So let's uh, compare that. Um, and, and if you disagree with me, uh, feel free to uh, comment and, uh, and correct me. And then I'll redo this entire video from scratch uh, just to uh, uh, refine that. We're going to look at generation three. Uh, group head. Notice uh, again the diameter of the bell gets a little larger. Um, the inside of the product uh, is is uh, uh, of the boiler is is pretty much the same, um, but you'll notice there's a difference here in that there's no way for steam to get into this pipe here. Now let me go back to generation two. You'll notice there's steam in this pipe. This pipe is steam, and the the copper goes all the way to this hole. And go back to generation three, uh, you'll see that this entire area uh, would probably be filled with water. I'm not sure where it displaces the original air or steam that might be in there, but let's just uh, let's just pretend the whole thing fills with water. Um, and uh, let's uh, start with the uh, the piston in the down position and see what happens. 
Uh, again, pressure in the boiler, uh, water being forced up through here if it has a place to go. Now we have this new thing, the sleeve is what we call it. And that sleeve uh, is made out of plastic. I think some people have metal sleeves. And the water can get around right back in here into this little area here. And it will then swirl around and it looks to me like the water then can get into the uh, upper chamber of the piston um, through this hole here. Uh, so the water actually kind of follows this channel down through the sleeve and then into the uh, top of the piston of the group head. Um, to keep the water from getting out, also in the Generation 2 it has the same thing. We've got a seal here and a uh, brass ring and then a snap clip. Uh, those things need to be lubricated, I suppose. Um, all right, so the uh, piston itself is exactly the same on the Generation 2 and Generation 3. The group head is larger because of that sleeve. And uh, because there's water swirling around here, the sleeve needs to have a seal here to keep water from getting down into the shower screen. And uh, so then let's go ahead and do a pre-infusion and see what happens there. Uh, go ahead and raise the, the piston all the way up. And then the water comes again, swirls around the outside of the uh, uh, sleeve. Um, some water makes it up here, makes it down through here, through this hole, and then fills this area with water and then uh, soaks your coffee grounds that are waiting down here. Uh, notice, there's, again, there's really no place for steam to get into the group head. And uh, so that's definitely a difference between Generation 2 and Generation 3. And then when you go ahead and extract your, co uh, extract your coffee, um, your espresso, um, the, this hole gets closed, uh, and then water again uh, will probably fill uh, the top of the piston area, including the outer side of the sleeve. So this is all hot water here, uh, done your extraction, and uh, there you go. So um, a lot of follow-on questions, I'm sure, but let's first take a look at uh, Generation 4. My understanding is Generation 4, I've never actually held one in my hands. Uh, the inside is almost identical. It's just that they've uh, changed the shape of the outside. Um, but uh, technically how it works on the inside is the same. Um, so uh, there you go. I know people have talked about dry pumping, um, uh, ways to heat up the group head, ways to cool down the group head, the differences between steam and water in Generations 2 and 3. Um, I hope this gives you enough to maybe explore this on your own and uh, add your own thoughts about how this all works. And if anybody is interested in helping verify the dimensions of the parts here, or if anybody's interested in helping uh, me model, uh, let's say, the, uh, um, the heating element or the electronics down here, I'm always looking for help uh, if anybody wants to um, uh, help uh, make uh, more variations on this product available. So uh, I guess that's it for now, and let's go ahead and turn off the um, section view. And uh, so here's our product again, and home view. And again, the link to get to this would be bit.ly slash CAD. And that brings up the CAD model that we were just looking at. If you want to actually look at this document here, uh, Le Pavone CAD Guide, uh, will take you to this uh, Google uh, Doc, and then um, I also, for you 3D printers out there, if you want to just print a little model of your CAD, uh, of, of the Le Pavone, uh, you can go here and get a version of the CAD that uh, has been filled in, all the voids have been filled in, so you can uh, 3D print a little uh, model if you want. Uh, ways to contact me here, and uh, looking forward to your guys' thoughts, and uh, talk to you later. Bye-bye.